You would have heard the programme yesterday, and my and it was an, a, a sense of outrage at uh, two reports that have come out of the Human Rights Commission. And the Human Rights Commission in New Zealand is a government-created body which is independent from the government, uh, which is tasked with the important job of upholding human rights in New Zealand for all New Zealanders. But increasingly, the Human Rights Commission, which includes the Office of the Race Relations Com uh, Commissioner, has become politically radical and indeed, I would say, revolutionary. And I am grateful this morning for... Um, the participation in the program of the Race Relations Commissioner, Ming Foon, who we are told by Paul Hunt, the Human Rights Commissioner, speaks for him on the matters that we will raise and therefore speaks for the entire Human Rights Commission. This morning we're going to discuss two reports which have uh, resulted in a call by the Commission for major constitutional reform based on a specific interpretation of the Articles of the Treaty of Waitangi and for a Truth and Reconciliation Commission to be established in New Zealand to resolve the racism that the Commission claims in these two reports is inherent, woven into the fabric, is the term, woven into the fabric of New Zealand society. Now, Ming Foon is waiting on the line. Before we want to go to him, I want to make this observation. These reports, and indeed it would seem to me the Commission's entire view, is only a specific view. Because uh, it says, and I'm going to quote here, we have not given space to views that displayed racism in this report. The Commission mostly received constructive feedback on the kaupapa of racism issue. Kaupapa issue of racism. But we also received a small minority of feedback that displayed racism. In some cases, this feedback displayed abuse towards this kaupapa and tangata whenua, as well as ethnic communities and the commission itself. This included content that denied the existence of racism, insisted that people needed to get over past events, objected to New Zealand being called Aotearoa, and considered existing ethnic, social and economic inequalities or iniquities the fault of people who experience them. The Commission has chosen not to give space to those voices in this report. This ensures the voices and experience of those who have experienced racism are at the forefront of this report. This stance is supported by research which has found that showing people their negative views are not validated or consensually shared can reduce prejudice. The Commission urges the government to take a similar approach in developing and implementing the plan while ensuring there is a supporting communications plan to help address the racism stirred by the plan itself. And I read that part of the report because there is an admission in there that this report in itself could be damaging to what we broadly call race relations in this country. And the person, as I said, charged by the government with ensuring that there isn't racism in New Zealand and our race relations are as good as they can be is Ming Foon. He is the Race Relations Commissioner and he joins us now. Ming, welcome to the programme. Kia ora. Kia ora, Sean. Morning. Good to see you, hear you. Yeah, look, nice to see you over the weekend. Um, I yeah. first want to address what I just read out. Isn't it a human right or the right of a New Zealander when the Human Rights Commission is dealing with such major issues to have their voices heard? Because it seems to me you have denied the rights of those that you simply or your researchers do not agree with. Yeah, no, it is the right of um, all New Zealanders to be heard. Um, but we've, we've, chosen to, uh, and we've chosen to publish the views of solutions the views of solutions... Of your uh, solutions, uh, uh, Ming, of the Commission's no, no, solutions. No, 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 no. We, we, look, this is how it all began, um, Sean. Um, we, we partnered with the uh, Minister of Justice, uh, Social uh, Ministry of Justice and the Minister of Justice, and they said, look, Ming, you go out and get the views and solutions from people that um, can help with um, eliminating racism, because eliminating racism comes from the United Nations um, Declaration of Eliminating Racism 
and the government has signed up to it. And okay, so uh, this is fundamentally uh, just, just clarify. Just a moment. I mean, I'm not going to interrupt you. I want you to continue. But this is fundamentally based on a UN dictate or policy. No, no, no. New Zealand actually signed up to it around about. Yeah, yeah no, no. The, I, I get that, but Ming, the answer was uh, the the question was specific. This is fundamentally then based on a United Nations policy. A global policy, yeah. A yep. global a policy United Nations to policy. racism across the world. Yep. Okay, all right. And, and um, probably about 90% of the countries actually signed up to it. Yep. And if every country is tasked with producing a um, policy to reduce or to... And it's actually more specific than that, is actually to eliminate racism. Mm. And so uh, from that, um, because our deadline for New Zealand is actually to produce a policy is for 2024. And so we started the process um, early last year and we went out to hundreds of communities, thousands, uh, 50,000 contributions from internet, um, social media and that, and we gleaned all of the different things from our communities, and that's what um, we've published. You had four, four, uh, 400 submissions and a survey of four, just 400 people? No, no, no. There's actually 400, 400 groups oh, okay. um, of people also. You know, some groups were 100, some groups were 10, some were 50. Mm. Yep. And so there's a But no of groups, that, but you wouldn't... And you heard from groups who didn't agree... Because I, I hate to say it, Ming, I read this and it's like a Black Lives Matter manifesto. It seems to be not particularly indigenous in terms of its rhetoric. I don't know what you mean by that, but I'm just saying... Well, I, what I, I mean is it, it tends to reflect uh, global liberalism in line uh, with when many other movements like Black Lives Matter around the world. Oh, well, our, my movement is to eliminate racism. Okay. And to create harmonious communities in Aotearoa. Okay. And um, we, we, we went to lots of groups like U3A, um, Lions and Rope Tree and those types of um, all, uh, groups as well. So it's not just all... Yeah. Um, and if they disagreed you know, with your interpretation of racism and the, and the, the extract I've just read, you didn't put that in the report? No, they they actually, uh, their contribution was quite positive, actually. The interesting thing about um, New Zealanders is, is that they all want good. They all want good, okay. whichever uh, perspective we come from. And um, So I, how I, is I, there any racism we, in New Zealand if we all want good? We all want good, but there are some nasty people out there. I'm not saying that we're all nasty, because 50% of our complaints that we actually get from the Commission is on race discrimination matters. Yep. That is a lot. The How many 50%, of that 50% are upheld? Um, it is actually, uh, the, we have a team that actually negotiates and um, and works with the people, the, the victim and the perpetrator to come to a solution. Mm. And um, probably around about 80% of mm. that. Mm. Um, there's a few repetitive people, uh, recidivists, you know, they, but they don't recidivate for too long because it's actually quite, quite costly. Mm. And not only costly, mm. um, but also um, the supply chain, if it actually gets down into, me into the media, the supply chain of people will hold those businesses to account. Mm. Ming, uh, so Ming this report, sort of as thing. I have read it, rejects or suggests that Westminster-style democracy itself is ra inherently racist? Well, look, we, we go back to the um, signing of the Tariti, and within a short period of time, um, and if you've ever seen um, Eva uh, Benna Cooper's um, movie the other day, within a short period of time, there was a deliberate policy of scorch earth was... Denying Māori their culture... Yeah, so my, 